Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Sister Susie, and today I have a couple of revelations that the Lord shared with me, and um, I want to share with you guys. And uh, in this uh, dream, the first one that he showed me, I was like walking on the road. And as I'm walking on the road, I am going to a school. And this school, it seemed as if it was on a hill. And I'm, I'm you know, going up the hill, and I notice what I'm wearing. And what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a, a deep red suit. You know, you know the, the jacket and the skirt, they were all, you know, red color. And the jacket, all like the, all my hands were covered. And uh, it is not something that I can wear. This color is very, very red. You know, like it would pop up, you know, like notice you. Like, oh my goodness, this person is wearing red. That's the kind of red I was wearing. And I also noticed that as I'm walking on this road, I am sweating, you know, and I'm sweating profusely. And I'm like, what is going on? But I continued to go to this school and I reached the place. It was like on a hilly area. And I see so many people, the students are all outside, you know, uh, they are just sitting around. And I wonder, I said, what is going on? Is there no class today? So I went there. And I asked one of the girls, I said, have you guys started already learning? She said, no. And uh, I see the teachers and they're not teaching whatsoever. And I guess there is no class. You know, I don't know if class is finished or what, but there is no class. Everybody's just sitting around. So that was the first part. And I met this girl called Selma. Now Selma means peace. And um, I've been seeing her quite a bit. I don't know why, but... You know, so I was I was still wearing that deep red suit. Everybody wasn't wearing that, but I was the only one who was wearing that, and um, and and I was sweating. So maybe the Lord is saying that class is finished or what? I don't know. Maybe that, but that's what I'm getting, because you know, even though the students were there, the place, you know, there was no class, there was no learning. Anyway, and so as I am still at the at that place, I see now, uh this girl, our friend called Bridget, and Sakani had a dream about her the other day. She she talked about Bridget. I see her too. She comes to me. She didn't talk, but what I noticed, she was wearing something. And uh, she was wearing uh, like, a you know, her normal clothes, but on top, she was wearing something else on top, just like this. And that's the closest I could find. I mean, I'm not saying that she's a high priest. No, that's not what I'm saying. But that's what she was wearing. She was wearing like, it might have been an apron or it might have been a, a, sh, um, a sweater on top of what she was wearing. But I noticed on the breast area, on her breast area, she had these little boxes, many of them. They were just right there on her chest. And, and I'm wondering, I'm like, what are these on her chest? Um... Remember, her name is Bridget, and uh, maybe the Lord is just trying to use her name, like, you know, bridge, you know, the Lord Yeshua, Jesus is the bridge between God and mankind. And, you know, he, he is also our high priest, you know, because that's what, you know, the ephod is, the high priest, the high priest would wear these when they are, you know, doing the ceremony in the temple. And I saw her wearing similar thing to this with the little boxes but what the difference was it wasn't these colors that I saw uh the stones no but what I saw was little pictures of people inside this little stony area there and so I was wondering I said well let me see if I can find myself or, or I can see myself and Sakani there and I looked in one of the boxes on her, on her chest to see if I was there, and yes, I was there, and Sakani was there too. And so I was like, wow, uh, I guess we are dear to her heart. And that's what came to my mind. I said, wow, I hope, I, I guess we are dear to her heart because it was on her chest. But like I said, I do believe, you know, the Lord is using her name. Jesus is the bridge between uh, uh, humans and, and, and God the Father. He's taking us back to God. Uh, and that's the role of the high priest is really to consecrate us and to sanctify us. You know, he's the he's our lamb. I mean, the sacrificial lamb of God to atone for our sins so that we can be holy, acceptable before the father. But so the next thing that happened was that now 
I found myself that, you know, I was on the side and all of a sudden I, I, um, there was this boy. I mean, I couldn't call him a boy. He was a young man. One of the people there. I mean, he was a black young man and he comes to me. I don't remember me. I don't remember him asking me to shave his head, but I found myself that I'm sitting down and he's also, the, I mean, he was sitting down and I'm standing up and I had a knife in my hand. Okay. And this knife, I was going to shave off his hair from his head. Okay. And I start, I start shaving off with a knife and I wondered why am I using a knife? You know, but that's what was there. I mean, I think this was a vision within the dream. So I began to, to shave off his head, his hair with a knife on his head. And uh, then one of, one of the girls comes and, and asks me, I say, Susie, what are you doing? I said, do you know this man? I said, no, but I'm just, I have to do this. And the, and the lady said, well, this man is a, uh, like, a, he was giving a, the students a hard time at the school. And, um, and they were saying that, you know, he has many kids all over the town and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. You know, but, you know, there I was shaving off his head. Now, I wondered why the Lord was showing me this part that I was shaving off his hair on his head with a knife. And lo and behold, when I searched that, he came to Ezekiel chapter 5. Mind you, this young man, this black young man, they were saying that he was giving a hard time to people um, and that he has kids all over the place. God's razor of judgment. Now, let me go ahead and read this. This is a very long scripture. Um, but let me see if I can just uh, read a couple of verses so you can understand why the Lord is using a, ray, uh, a knife to shave off his head. Um, I, I do believe the Lord used me just symbolic to to convey the message of what is about to take place. Okay, or Ezekiel chapter 5, uh, God's rays of judgment says, Now, son of man, take up a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up the hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair. Okay, and then it says... Uh, take up a third and, okay, when the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city and scatter a third to the wind. For I will pursue them with drawn sword and take a few hairs and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire will spread from there to all Israel. This is what the sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the center of the nations, which can with countries all around her. Yet in her wickedness, she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Okay. And then it says, verse seven, therefore, this is what the sovereign law says. You have been more unruly than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or my or kept my laws you have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you okay therefore this is what the sovereign lord says i myself am against you jerusalem and i will inflict punishment on you in the sight of nations so this young man okay the black young man who was giving everybody a hard time like a bully at the school and also he had so many kids all over the city the Lord is saying, I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations because of all your detestable idols. And I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst, parents will eat their, in your midst, parents will eat their children and children will eat their parents. I will inflict punishment on you and will scatter all your survivors to the wind. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will shave you. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by the famine inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls, and a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue with the drawn sword. Anyway, you can, I will stop there. You can continue. It says, okay, it says, Then my anger will cease and my wrath against them will subside. And I will be avenged. 
And when I have spent my wrath on them, they will know that I, the Lord, have spoken in my zeal. You know, so the Lord is very, very, very serious, you know, because, you know, it, 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 it says here clearly they have rejected his laws, you know, and they have not followed my decrees. You know, this is the hour that the Lord is saying we have to repent. This is why we have to repent at all times, because, you know, we have rejected the laws of the Lord. We're not following his um his decrees okay so let us pray because his rays of judgment is coming and like i said this was a young man who was uh giving a hard time and it is israel okay israel is a people uh, and it's not only this young man is is all over the the world people who are not following the lord you know will fall under this kind of judgment so i do believe that's what the lord was um was uh, showing us. Okay, so the next scene from the boy with that I was shaving uh, with a knife in his hair, head, it kind of changed the scene, changed, I now found myself that I was at J.C. Penny uh, shop, clothes shop. And in this shop, you know, I see that the clothes were like all over the place, like how people come to, you know, to try on this, that area. And then they'll just, if they don't want to buy it, they just put it everywhere. Some some clothes were on the floor. Some people some clothes were just hanging around. And I I think I was just sorting the clothes, just putting them nicely. Now this part, please don't get offended because that's what the Lord showed me, and I think it's very very important. So as I am doing this, like I said, it was a, a J C Penny, and I do believe J C Penny symbolized Jesus Christ shop. Now, please don't get offended. I I, I now realized that as I'm doing this. Okay, I, I could feel, I didn't see, I could feel like I'm not clothed, like I don't have any clothes, like I'm naked. And I'm like, oh my goodness, where are my clothes? Where are my clothes? You know, I could not really understand what happened to my clothes. And uh, all of a sudden, because, you know, it's that area that, you know, people try and they go to the mirror to look. I, I was like, let me go to the mirror. I went to the mirror to see if, what happened to me. I found that now I was closed, my, the clothes I have clothes on. Even though it was feeling that I don't have clothes, I have clothes on. And the clothes was a black shirt and a red skirt. And so the whole oh, thing, God, I have, I have clothes on, you know. Anyway, but the point is, why is the Lord showing me like as if I am not clothed, but then I have clothes on? And I, uh, I remember uh, when we are in Christ, we really have to be completely surrendered to the Lord. Our life to the Lord has to be bare. They have, they cannot be any secrets between you and God. That means you have not completely surrendered. Okay, so it feels like you are naked, you are exposed, but really you are not exposed. He has covered us with His uh, clothing, and that is why I have on the red skirt, and then I have on uh, the black shirt. Then also, uh, and I wondered why am I having um, a black and a red, a, a, a red um, uh, skirt. And um, I remember because the Lord had also, now I'm going to go back a little bit. The Lord had, had given me a, a dream whereby I saw the moon and the moon, it felt as if it was full, but the top part, half of it was black and half of it was white. And I remember he said, a division arising a division arising and it was connected to the moon and half of it being black and half of it being white. And, and that's what I think also this part is symbolizing that I was wearing a black, black shirt and the red skirt. And it's something to do with a division is about to occur. Now, what does the division, like the Lord is about to remove those who are his and then, you know, those that are ready. And then the ones that are not ready are going to be here. But also I do believe the black is symbolizing that, you know, we, we will be in that it's a time of mourning you know now is a time of mourning it's not it's not a time to um it, it's gonna be a time of celebration but also it's a, it's a time of mourning it's half and half uh, and that's what I was um, um, thinking well it was coming to my mind that it's half and half it's a time of mourning it is also a time of rejoicing anyway so that was the part that you know I know I found myself that I was clothed even though it felt like I wasn't so we need to be bare before the Lord. We need to search our heart and really confess all our sins to the Lord. Let us be free and say, Lord, whatever you know I've done in my life, please search me and just 
completely. I lay behind you. I mean, I lay down in front of you. I mean, just kind of everything has to be, his light has to expose anything dark. There has to be no hidden thing, he, hidden thing in our lives before the Lord. Anyway, and so, and this morning, and, and, and when I woke up, I, I heard this, today there's half a light, you know, I, I was like, I think it's the same concept, today there's half a light, you know, meaning that the top part is black and the top bottom part is, is, um, is, uh, is white, or you could say the concept of the, like the yin and the yang, the division, okay, half a light. I heard today there's half a light. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean today, today. Because remember, the Lord speaks in the now moment. He's always in the present. So we don't know what what is today. So always keep that in mind. Also, and then after after I heard today is half a light, I heard, a, I heard a woman. And I could see now that a woman was reading a letter. Or she was reading something. And um, either reading or writing. And she said... She, a woman was reading a letter of her and mercy. And she said that their work is finished. I heard that. She said, our work, me and mercy, not me as in me, Susie, but that lady and mercy, their work that they have been given is finished. I heard that clearly. Now, when I, when I was like hearing that, that their work is finished, immediately what popped into my mind is what Jesus was writing in the prayer of John chapter 17. And I'm going to go ahead and read this. And it says, John chapter 16, Jesus prays to be glorified. After, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life that you may know that they may know you. They know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And that's what I was hearing. They say that the work that I was, they were given is finished. This person and mercy, the work they were given is finished. And I do believe this was what uh, I was hearing here. John chapter 17 says, uh, verse 4. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So, brothers and sisters, what is the message? You, you guys can go ahead, uh, finish the whole uh, of this um, scripture, John chapter 17, because for the sake of time, I'm not going to. But the Lord is saying, the hour has come. You know, it is on John. The hour has come. The work that he was given and mercy, the Holy Spirit, the work is almost, I mean, the work is finished. They say the work is finished. That's what I heard. The work is finished. Now, I'm not saying that now, you know, there's no more Jesus. No, no, no. But like you, you can clearly see here, I think there is dispensations of time. I think that's what I'm coming to, um, to my understanding. Dispensation of time. Like a time, this period is coming to a close. And another period is coming, is, is beginning. Another age is coming, is beginning. Okay, So this work that they've been given in this period is coming to a close. And then another period, a work, another work is going to begin. Now we don't know what that uh, work has. But all I know, this morning I heard the work this, this person was given and mercy, their work that he had been given is finished. So that means the hour has come okay the hour has come anyway brothers and sisters be encouraged you know let us remain vigilant let us remain steadfast in the lord and like i said he wants us to be bare before him not as in clothing but our heart to him has to have nothing hidden inside you know nothing hidden inside no you know uh agendas that are just you know uh your own agendas no but he wants us to really be bare before him. Repent anything and everything. So because the hour has come. All right, saints. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And until next time, this is Sister Susie. I love you all. Bye.